Hey, what up, ladies and gents? It's your favorite Asian robot right here. And today, what I'm here to do is to basically turn a viewer build into a pro Asian robot build. Okay, first of all, um, this dude came to me. Um, Austin Phonix came to me saying, Bro, I made an insane attack speed build with fiery breastplate plus evasive. Furry Shrike, I think he means uh, Shrike Zeal Lantern plus Conduit. Um, because there's no equipment called Furry Shrike. Striders of the Rift plus Conduit. Um, which I'll show you why is incorrect later. I think he uh, typed in the wrong cell there, but uh, he probably has a cell somewhere. Um, Skullforge plus Sturdy, Inferno Fang plus Sharpen times 2, and Malkyrion's Grip plus Predator. I'm still experimenting with it though, but that's what I've got at the moment. I'm thinking of switching the boots to Thunderdeep plus Savagery and keep Free Shrike, but switch it to Zeal instead of Conduit. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... I've built that exact build here. Except that Striders of the Rift... You can't put a Conduit cell here, so I don't know what he put in here. Um, and he already has plus 6 Evasive Fury, so... I couldn't think of what he actually put in here, but... Uh, if you figure it out, well, let me know. But, um... Yeah, basically this build right here, I guess I could give it Adrenaline just to fill it the space because I feel so weird leaving that be. But basically uh, Inferno's Fangs, two Sharpened Cells. I'm assuming he used Iceborne instead of Tempest because uh, this build has no other form of sustain. Uh, Shrike Zeal plus Conduit. You have Skull Forge with uh, Sturdy here. Okay. Fiery Breastplate with Evasive Fury. Malkyrion's Grass with Predator. And Striders of the Rift with Adrenaline. But um, what I'm going to say, first of all, is that yes, this build can indeed reach um, the attack speed cap. Uh, I'm going to explain how. First and foremost, Conduit gives you... <coughs> excuse me. Conduit gives you 15% attack speed, okay? Evasive Fury gives you 15%. And lastly, the Shrike's Zeal will give you 15%. So in total, you have 45% plus your Reforge bonuses of 5. You can reach the attack speed cap. But there is a better way to do this. Furthermore, um, Sharpened is, as you all know, a very bad sell because all it does is increase part damage. It's actually useless for combat. Why? Because Sharpened will create a disparity between your part damage and your core damage. Notice how my part damage is higher than your core damage. This was explained in my video where I talked about how damage works in Dauntless. The link is in the description of this video. Please do check out that video because it's very important. If you want to build your own builds, that's totally okay. But please watch that video because it is very important to do so. If you do not watch that video, you guys will not be able to do your best damage, okay? If you want to build your own, that's totally cool. But this will not help you reach the pinnacle at all. And you will actually fail and fall very short of what your goal is. Okay, uh, so I'm going to show you how to take the same principle of this build, but turn it into a pro build. Okay, how do you do that? Well... In this particular build, the biggest problem is that I don't know what cell is in here, originally. I don't know what cell is in here, and he forgot about Molten. Leaving Molten at plus 3 is kind of pointless, because if you want to go for max attack speed, Molten gives you 10%, as well as fire immunity. So, you can have it up literally permanently by just going Molten plus 6. So, I built the same build here, in this slot, okay, but this is a pro build version. First of all... Um, in order to open up build possibilities, if you're already going to use Malkyrion, which is an endgame item, as well as Predator, which is a generally a cell recommended mostly for endgame, um, although some beginner builds use it because, for example, the repeaters, because it's very easy to operate, and it's also one of the earliest sources of basic damage that you'll get. Um, what I've done here instead is I've used the Scorching Agonies, so I could still bond to Inferno's Fangs, but I have Prismatic Cell slots, so I have the option of putting Berserker and Recycle. This other Recycle was absolutely crucial because we've swapped the boots to Bladed Boots with a Recycle Cell. So overall, what we have is basically the same build, but now I'm going to show you how we get Sustain and how we get all the attack speed in this build. So, starting from the top, we've got Scorching Agonies with Berserk Cell, Recycle Cell. You've got your Hurricane Blades here, you've got Inferno's Fangs here, and Reaper's Dance is your special, okay? This basically will be your weapon choice. You've got Tempest for your Omnicell, 
You've got Skarn's Defiance with a Molten Cell, okay? Skullforge with a Parasitic Cell. Fiery Breastplate, Fiery Breastplate with Evasive Fury. Uh, Malkyrion's Grass with Predator. And Bladed Boots with Recycle. So here in the in his belt, your 15% is conditional. Your 15% here is only going to last 10 seconds from Conduits. Strike Zeal also only lasts 10 seconds. But a Lantern's cooldown is 30 seconds, which means you don't have your max attack speed cap for two-thirds of the battle. Okay? Here, it's a bit different. You have 15% attack speed on demand, as long as you dodge. You have 15% from Assassin's Frenzy, which will last 20 seconds as soon as you break apart. Fairly easy to do in combat. Okay? You've got... Molten, which will be a constant 10%, Tempest, constant 10%, and your basic Reforge bonus of 5%. Total is 25% constant. You have 25% consistently, all right? Unlimited stamina thanks to the Skull Forge, Predator and Recycle for massive damage, Berserker for massive raw damage, overpower for when you do knock it down because it comes baseline with the Inferno's Fangs, and your 30% is conditional, okay? But Take note that you still go over the cap by 5%. Alright? So, Assassin's Frenzy is just the simplest way to do th to do this. Um, but Evasive Fury is pretty easy to trigger. All you have to do is dodge, and you should be dodging anyway, because you have the Skull Forge, so you always have the option to dodge. And you can dodge with your Chain Blade Special. So, with this one, you can do much higher damage. Alright, there'll be no separation between part and core damage. All right, your DPS will just be absolutely insane as long as you're hitting the same part thanks to Recycle. Again, very easy to do with the Chain Blades. And you can also still reach the same level of attack speed while also being fire immune, having more movement speed thanks to Molten. And overall, the build is much stronger because when you use Sharpened, you are using that. Sharpened is used for part hunting. It's not actually used for damage. So let's go see how this pro build will function you know, in actual combat. Let's go to Twilight Sanctuary because I haven't touched my chain blades for a very long time. So this is the only hunting grounds that would be normal, but eh, well, I guess it'll count as a simple enough showcase. All right. I mean, if you want to test the viewer's build yourself as well, you can, you can go ahead and do that and then you can test mine and then you can see the difference between the two and how they both function because basically I want to limit the number of factors that require triggering you see the shrike's zeal the problem with shrike's zeal is that it lasts only 10 seconds so it's not very useful to you and then after that it doesn't help your sustain it doesn't help you with anything you may as well use tempest because if you're going to be dodging anyway you may as well use tempest to really get what you need to you to basically not only get an additional attack off the omni cell but get the 10 percent attack speed baseline which makes you a lot faster and a lot more dangerous okay um possibly because the other dude used iceborne he didn't really need as much sustain, but overall, I would say that this, what I've got right now, is probably a better idea. Now, what I'm going to also show you is that because you've got Molten in this build, you don't want to chain pull as your first attack. Use a normal attack right here. And sorry, Austin, you don't want Savagery in your build either. So I hope uh, that is understood because using Savagery in, your, in a non-wounding build is a very bad idea. All right. So you basically want to just keep, all right, dodging, going through. Now you've got plenty of s sustain from your shields, as well as parasitic if you do get in trouble. Okay. You've also got your tempest for all your part damage, because if you're worried about part damage, which is why you're using sharpened, um, you not only have tempest to help you with that via the uh, tempest dodges, but you're also getting more out of your whole build in general. So this is the way that I would play this, because basically unlimited stamina, I can spin as much as I want, literally forever. Thanks to the Skull Forge, I can dish out as much damage as I want, literally forever, and at high attack speed too. I'm totally immune to fire, alright, and... Like I said, I can reach attack speed caps as long as I break apart. So I dodge, break parts, and get close to the attack speed cap. All in one go. And even if I do take damage, it's not that big of a deal.
Now, sustain wise, right, I would also say that um, a vast majority of the sustain is only coming from your parasitic cell. So while it's up, you have to you have to sort of like, I guess the principle is make hay while the sun shines. You have to kind of do that because if you don't, you're going to have a very bad time. All right. But if it's a non-Terra behemoth, you can also, you can also gain a lot. All right. Of potential sustain from simply hitting it with your Skarn's Defiance Lantern. As you can see, that fight provided you with, you know, everything you need. Ideally, the build itself requires you to evade in the first place. The The principle of the build is to evade. So, you, in order to not lose your predator bonus. So, assuming that you are evading properly, most fights are not going to be difficult for you. Uh, let's go kick the ass of the uh, Thunderdeep Drask so that we can, you know, so that I can show you how uh, this thing will function against, let's say, an easier behemoth uh, compared to the Scorchstone Hellion. Alright. Now, we had an elemental disadvantage against the Scorchstone Hellion. It was three levels higher than us. But what happens in a more normal situation? Okay, if you take a hit, alright. That's okay. You have your Parasitic for that duration, and you can effectively steal back some health. But what you need to be aware of is that doing all that without your Lantern is going to go badly for you. Alright, but your Lantern comes up only once every 30 seconds, so it's not something that you can rely on forever. This build, in general, is evasive in nature. So, evade. Alright, use the Skull Forge to your advantage. Evade attacks. And dive in close to dish out massive damage. You don't have to fear once you're in close range because, guess what? You have all the cards in your hand. Alright? And if you want to get even more attack speed by wounding, more attack speed baseline, that is to say. Oh, Thunder Deep Draft's already dead. Okay, well, um... Yeah, so basically this will now become like if you if you want to do high attack speed without the fire cell This is one way you can build it and um, That fight was over a little too quickly, but yeah, just be aware that this build comes with a little less sustain than you might like and um, One of the alternatives that I can suggest if sustain is a problem although it shouldn't be Okay, although it shouldn't be um, I'm just going to explain one thing which you can do t as an alternative, okay? Why is the supply crate not coming down? Come on, supply crate, work with me here. Oh my god, is this supply crate bugged or something? There we are, that's wild. Okay, so one alternative that you can do, if you want to play this whole build, but you want a bit more sustain, I'm going to teach you how. Change this to Koshai's Bloom, okay? Here, same thing, Molten Cell. But here, instead of Parasitic, you put in Toughness. Why? This Toughness Cell will give you 15% increased healing, so your lifesteal will be a lot easier, and it will counter the effect of Berserker, which drops your health by 150. This, in general, gives you a bit more of a health pool to play around with, and as long as you only expect your lifesteal to come up every 30 seconds, then you can definitely survive wait for your opportunity like when you knock down the behemoth or something dash in close and life steal then but because this build uses predator you do have to be good at evasion i mean the whole principle of this build is to evade with evasive fury so that you get extra attack speed and keep your predator up all right so this is an alternative that you can also try if you want to max out the attack speed and have a bit more survival in there all right thank you very much for watching this video i hope you guys enjoy my content don't forget to like share and subscribe if you want to support me even further, you can drop a tip via the link in the description of the video. And most importantly, if you want to, here's my email, realasianrobot at gmail.com. You can, if you'd like to, and I always say this because it makes haters mad, you can order a custom build for 50 USD. I can build you whatever you want. All right. It'll be two of your exact specifications, whatever you happen to specify. And you can also ask me for heroic escalation carries. Same price, 50 USD. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all have a good one now.